Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and if you're a regular to the channel you'll have immediately spotted I'm not in my normal place where I make videos I'm actually out in my uh, workshop uh, because I've got a little bit of an electrical fault finding video today and it involves this machine here that you can only see part of but this is a late 1940s uh, Invicta model 1m shaping machine um, not terribly common these days i've had one in the past but it was mechanically not very good so i got rid of it about 20 years ago but uh, this one came up a few weeks back um, in excellent condition um, with a slight niggling electrical problem which i was pretty sure i could sort out and i'm pleased to say i have so that's what i want to talk about today and the um, thing i'm going to talk about is is this now technically this is a, an auto memota uh, starter and i believe can't prove it but i'm pretty certain this is the original starter that would have come with this machine late 40s early 50s and these starters are what i tend to call a, a no volt release but they're a bit more than that because as well as containing an on off switch they also contain um, usually contain an over current um, uh, trip um, and also they have the ability by pressing these buttons to allow you to start something on three phase I'm just on single phase here but these certainly do work with single phase so let's um, start by a quick look at uh, what a what a no volt release actually is and why it's important on a machine tool okay I think before we um, start looking at the actual problem what we actually need to do is define a couple of things for you um, appreciate some of you may be fully conversant but I suspect many won't be and I think the first question I probably need to answer is what is a shaping machine and I guess it's probably um, the closest thing you'll get to a, a metal planing machine uh, and before milling machines were a lot more common uh, shaping machines are very common I worked for an engineering company in the, the 80s, the 70s and 80s and they had a couple of shaping machines in the tool room and these machines are capable of, of producing uh, uh, flat surfaces using a tool that's very similar to the kind of tool you might find on a lathe and certainly for a home workshop it's quite a handy thing to have because uh, it's much easier to grind lathe tools yourself than it is to sharpen um, milling cutters you need something specialized to do that so here's um here is the machine actually running and some pictures of it actually cut in metal you've already seen and hopefully uh, it makes some sense um, quite a nice machine to work with really although I can understand why they're probably fallen out of favor you can imagine how complicated the guards would need to be on these things um, to keep a uh, health and safety inspector happy perhaps in a, a school or a college environment so not many shapers around anymore but uh, I'm very pleased with mine so that's a shaper let's now look at the circuit diagram of the starter unit that the shaper came uh, with uh, when I collected it okay I've answered the question what's a shaping machine let's now look at uh, exactly what uh, starters do and there's no better way to do that than look at the actual circuit diagram of the starter which is uh, uh, which the machine came with and this is uh, a little photograph of the circuit diagram that's inside um, the front cover of the uh, starter unit so uh, how does it work well very simply pressing the on button bottom left there uh, energizes the coil which you can see highlighted there that coil when it's energized draws together the contacts and connects supply L1, 2 and 3 to motor A, B and C uh, in the case of single phase suppliers it says they just use um, L1 and L3 and A and C and you get the same effect uh, obviously this machine is fitted with a three phase voltage style coil it says they're 380 to 440 um, but it was actually um, contacting uh, fine with with a 240 volts um, single phase supply so I don't think that's um, what the problem is um, pressing the stop button uh, de-energizes the coil 
and causes the contacts to, to break and uh, the motor to, to stop. Uh, also note there the um, overcurrent trip is in series with the with the off switch. Now um, why do you need to do this? Why can't you just have an on off switch? Well um, lots of reasons really. Um, this is a relatively small machine with a relatively low power uh, motor but you can use this kind of arrangement to switch uh, much uh, larger capacity motors with a higher current where you wouldn't want um, that large current being switched uh, inside a, a switch directly. Um, so this is a, it gives you the ability to remotely switch a higher current. Uh, secondly, um, if you ponder the circuit diagram for a moment or two, you'll hopefully spot that in the event of um, a power failure or the current being turned off externally on the supply, the um, coil will no longer be energized so the contacts will by definition break and when the power supply comes back on the machine will not restart it will only restart if you press the on button so in other words if um, the machine has stopped because of an electrical fault and somebody's inside there looking the machine isn't going to surprise you by restarting if the power supply comes back on so hence the um, thing I called it which was a, a no volt release but as usual of course they always have a an overcurrent or usually have an overcurrent in them as well as the uh, the contactor unit so um, that's the machine as supplied uh, with the original contactor box uh, on the, the bottom left there and the fault was quite simply that the machine would uh, would start and run without the clutch engaged and it would do that very well for uh, quite quite a long time maybe two or three minutes uh, if you engage the clutch within a few seconds um, the uh, trip went and the trip would eventually go if you left the motor running for for, for two or three minutes um, so that was the fault so let's now have a look at, um, at what's going on and what we think the problem might be okay so what I want to do is first of all uh, take some measurements of how the machine actually runs both when it's idling and also when it's actually uh, under load and to do that I'm going to use my uh, clamp meter here it's the Kiewitz HT206D and I'm going to set it to the 60 amps range I'm going to change that to um, AC there using the function but I'm also going to use the max min button um, as it, it'll, it'll record the uh, well as it says on the tin it'll record the maximum or the minimum and it's the maximum that I'm interested in so I'm going to get set up so I can um, film me measuring the current okay it's not the easiest place to film in here but uh, you can hopefully see I've got uh, the clamp meter here set to AC current and I've just got it hooked over one of the wires that uh, go from the starter box to the actual uh, the motor itself so I'm going to start the motor so that's just what I'm going to call idling and it's saying about one point it's about 1.87 if I just press the max there yeah 1.85 is what I'm getting there um, you can hopefully hopefully that is coming out in the camera one, about 1.85 amps so now what I'm going to do is take the same measurement this time uh, with the with the machine running okay so I'm going to start the motor again and we've got that just under two amps there so I'm just going to engage the clutch apologies for the background noise and now what I'm going to do is press the max min switch everything off and it's reading 3.09 amps there hopefully you're going to perhaps make that out but it is about 3.09 amps now that's the machine um, with the clutch engaged actually doing the the machine is actually running but it isn't actually cutting any metal obviously it would be a little bit more if it was actually cutting metal okay so here's the uh, contactor that I removed remember I called it the auto memota and the front removes and inside it looks incredibly similar to a new one just um, a little bit uh, 
that's we've got a special cobweb in it now that doesn't take the spiders long to move in so we've got at the back there the coil and the contactor itself here moves up and down and that's what makes the circuit and it's got coils there that measure the current and this is the overcurrent trip um, and that there is the adjuster currently it's set to one amp but if i screw that down i can go uh, up to two amps and you can hopefully see that um, uh, any of those tripping out will will cause the um, contactor to to disconnect and we've still got the same on off no volt release function that we had uh, had previously um, so there's probably not a great deal wrong with that it certainly looks all right i just think um it's probably not to purpose correctly and what try, tends to give me the clue there is and i will i will put a a better picture of this for you but that's the um the wiring diagram and i'll here's a uh, a still of it which is hopefully a bit easier to see and it does tell you there how to um, wire it for uh, three phase and single phase um, and so yeah i think it's this box that's uh, potentially against us so we'll uh, we'll try replacing it with a new one and um, and see what's what okay this is the no volt release that's um, now fitted to the machine and um, apart from looking a bit more modern it pretty much uh, does exactly the same thing so i'm just going to disconnect the power and then uh, we'll have a quick look inside okay Apologies for the slightly shaky camera work, just difficult to film here. So that's the insides of it. There's the, the two buttons that you could see the on and the off. And here is the contactor unit which contains the solenoid that does the on and off switching. This is just a single phase version, but you can see there is facility there to um, connect up three wires if you had a, a three, verse, three phase version fitted. And then down at the bottom here is the uh, current over current trip. Um, and it is adjustable um, so I'll just show you a close-up of that you can see it's um, set to 5 amps and at 5 amps I've had uh, little, or, uh, little or no problem at all so uh, uh, problem solved okay well we've had a look inside the old contactor we've had a look inside the new contactor we've measured the current and we've seen that the problem was um, the current was simply too much for the uh, machine um, and a new uh, starter box has cured that problem completely um, and I suspect that um, if you've been following this closely you're probably now thinking yeah but hang on why because actually if you think about it the machine would actually tick over without the clutch engaged um, for quite a long time uh, on the old box it was only when you started doing work that it um, tripped the overcurrent and that's obviously a bit of a puzzle because well then that wasn't really a usable machine now i've no idea whose machine this was i bought it from a second hand machinery dealer who's, who's well known to me and they did at the time say slight electrical problem in fact it came with a new contactor box which i fitted and um, so i can only speculate and my speculation is quite simply this um, this machine originally was fitted with a three phase motor and this starter box because it does contain the instructions inside for how to wire it for three phase and it's got the 380 volt coil in it which does actually remain connected I mean it's probably not helping but it does it does work on 240 as well it keeps the contacts um, engaged so my theory is that actually this machine was three phase and uh, when it finished its working life in industry whoever got it in their home workshop put a single phase motor in probably got very frustrated with it and maybe couldn't quite understand what the problem was but you've probably already worked out what the problem was um, was as I suspect I have I can't be certain but of course a three phase motor um, we're drawing two amps on each phase is actually a total current consumption of six amps that's available so that wouldn't trip until any of the phases had gone over two amps and i think even cutting metal this doesn't draw six amps so my theory is this was three phase that was the original box and on a, a three phase system of course um, you've got three conductors 
um, with three separate phases as it says in the name each, ab each able to carry through this box at least up to two amps and that would be the equivalent in single phase terms of six amps which of course uh, that would have tripped long before it got anywhere near six amps so that's my theory it's an educated guess I do suspect I'm right but I'll never know and I'll never find out I am however delighted with my shaping machine it's working a treat so um, I'm happy and that's good thanks very much for watching the video I hope you've found it useful and just a bit different to my normal videos um, just bear in mind that I've been working with 240 volts um, you shouldn't be doing that unless you're qualified and you certainly shouldn't be doing it unless you're 100% comfortable I wouldn't recommend that you do work with mains voltage that's not a good idea get somebody who's competent or qualified to do it and then that way um, you're taking no risks and certainly as I say I wouldn't recommend you did it hope um, to see you on the next video thanks very much for watching bye for now